first three micro-markets, there's City Hall, Bugis, Marina Centre. When we planned this development, we were thinking about actually linking all three districts. We put a lot of attention to the pedestrian network and how it's going to link to four different MRT lines. We are going to attract thousands of talented people who come into Guaco Midtown. When we talk about rejuvenating a location, it is not just the physical, but it is really that influx of this new group of people. It will catalyze uh, the, the transformation that's already happening in that district. So when we look at the site, we're getting the essence of the old neighbourhood with the contemporary Tower City and putting the two together. Rather than just a podium development with a series of towers, what we're trying to do is create a bit of urbanity, a bit of city building back on the site. So we're getting the fine-grained human scale development coming out of that, together with the towers. In fact, we've got seven different squares and gardens. So it's broken down. So it's not a massive, it's, as we keep talking about, this sort of human scale. While they could accommodate large events, the notion is you'll feel very comfortable within them. Baco Midtown will not be a product that is on a standstill, but it will continue to grow, evolve. You are part of a dynamic development. When we design residential property, we always think about it from the user's perspective. So one of the things that has become quite clear is that our lives are now much more integrated. So we have conceptualised and designed the residential apartments as basically for live, work or entertain at home. If you look at the layout plan, it's actually a rectilinear space. It's not a space that appears to be disjointed. I think this clarity in terms of the layout had really happened in Midtown Bay. So you can function in the daytime as an office space. You could do a bed concept like a Murphy bed that flips down. That in the daytime is actually a work area. In the night, it could be a sleeping area. And this allowed a play of activities, of functions that strangely, as I say, can work within such a small area it's a home that allows a growth of activities to happen. There's this highly activated, familiar public realm open space system that's got all this buzz and activity happening down below. Then the residential component really floats up above it, so it's elevated, so you can be removed. It's taking advantage of the great views that exist, the towers located in a way to look past and not be overlooked by the adjoining towers. We twisted the tower orientated it to maximise the outlook. That seemed critical to us. So once you're in your own unit, you're in your own private space, but if you want to get out, it's all happening down below you in the gardens and squares in the midtown that we've created. Midtown Hub is essentially a business and social club. The idea is really to create a sort of a very engaging space for people to share ideas, to be able to get the people to think out the box, meet people with different ideas. It's very important for companies to continue to innovate. When you live in Midtown Bay, uh, you are directly plugged into this network activities and people and communities. The cities that stand out that we all want to go and visit are characterised by great streets, great places, great neighbourhoods. And that's what we've sought on this development. It's simple, yet powerful, and there's so much things that's happening inside. And I can't wait to see the whole development complete. Owning Midtown Bay is essentially like owning a piece of Guaco Midtown and everything else that Guaco Midtown has to offer.